So an another fun thing I like to do with linguistics is just find a random language, a language that is so obscure, I've never heard of it before, I don't know anything about it or its speakers, and just read about it and, and, and learn what's going on with it. And it connects with my uh, enjoyment of uh, traveling and exploration and geography and just seeing another corner of the world. Uh, so I'm going to start by looking at this list of language families. And we can see that there's a very steep drop off. So you can see here that when you look, you know, you're looking at the first page here of language families and the numbers. Look how quickly these numbers drop off from 3 billion and already down below 10 million total speakers. And most people in the world are <laughs> speaking one of these, these top language families. I mean, this is really most of the world here. Uh, and this is what we're used to. Uh, most people are used to speaking a language that has millions and millions of speakers. But once you get past this opening page, you're already down to very, very niche stuff. All right, so here we can see you know, Indo-European, which has you know, most of the languages of Europe, uh, as well as Northern India, and in between, and spread around the world. We see Sino-Tibetan with Chinese. Atlantic Congo has the Bantu languages, which of most of Africa, uh, south of the Sahara. Afroasiatic includes the Semitic languages, including Arabic, spoken over North Africa and the Middle East. Austronesian, language of islands Southeast Asia and Oceania. Dravidian, language of South India. Turkic, the language of Central Asia. And then you get into some of these uh, more uh, focused languages, like we have like Japonic. Well, it's, it's its own family, but it's almost entirely just the Japanese language, which is a major language with over 100 million speakers. Then we have Austro Austroasiatic. Ah, here we have, this is the language you can see of uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, and uh, many areas around there. The Kradai languages includes Thai and some languages of Southwest China. Koreanic, we have, this is just like Japonic, this is sort of, this is just, just Korea, basically. We have some Nilotic languages of Central Africa. Um, the Mande group of West Africa. Uralic group, which includes Finnish, Hungarian, and some Northern Russian languages. Saharan, some languages in Chad and uh, you know, the Sahara Sahel area of Africa. Hmong Mien, the, another language of Southeast Asia and China scattered around the, uh, these uh, various hills. You can see like that, that map there. It's so like these scattered little pockets. Uh, Sudanic, this is another language of language family of Central Africa. So really, really the, just that list, just that list, we've really gone through most of the speakers in the world um, are going to be speaking one of those groups. So it really puts a different perspective on the, the variation in the world because and you know, we think of it, yeah, it's often described that there are 7,000 languages in the world, you know, but it's a very, very top-heavy distribution. And especially when you group them by language families this way of related languages, uh, you have really a few that have taken over most of the world. Now we're going to go on to the, the second page. And um, now you can see things are dropping off from like under 10 million to under 1 million. And now we're getting to, uh, let's see the one that I don't know about. Yeah, so here's another one. I can't say I've sorted out all these uh, Central African languages. See, most of most of uh, Africa, most of North Africa is speaking Arabic-based uh, languages and uh, the, uh, the Afro-Asiatic family. Most of Africa south of the Sahara is speaking Bantu uh, and the Atlantic Congo uh, language family. Uh, but then there's these little language families sort of in between, like Sudanic here. Um, we have and uh, a Modic from Ethiopia, Quechuan in South America and the Andes. Um, which is interesting as one of the, maybe the most, uh, the most populous of any uh, indigenous, uh, in indigenous American 
languages, as in here South American. Uh, so that one, that, that's an interesting language family. Uh, Mongolian and its branches. Uh, the Mayan, another one from Mexico. We have the Tupi languages of Brazil, indigenous Brazil. Um, ooh, Kartvelian, here we have languages in Georgia. So this is from the Caucasus Mountains. Uh, they have some interesting languages like Georgian. So I guess Kart, I think Kartvelia is one of the Georgian names for Georgian. Uh, another Caucasian uh, group, such as in, in Dagestan, so from that area. Uh, the Kru languages of Africa. Well, here we have more languages of specific coastal area of West Africa. We have the languages of New Guinea. New Guinea, famous for having the most linguistic diversity in one corner of the world. Uh, I believe it said there's over a thousand languages on this one large island. Uh, but a lot of them are part of this trans-New Guinea language family. Songhai, another uh, languages of the upper Niger ri River in uh, central West Africa. Ijao, southern Nigeria, another language of Nigeria that's not Bantu, interesting. Aymaran is another one after Quechua and is in the other uh, great language family of the Andes Mountains of South America. We have uh, Aztecan languages from Mexico uh, and surrounding areas. Um, Otomangian, more uh, indigenous Mexican languages. Northwest Caucasian, you see a lot of linguistic diversity in these uh, mountains here. Uh, another language family there. Um, Maban, another language in that middle zone of, uh, here we have in, uh, in uh, Sudan, Chad, that uh, central, um, central um, African area uh, between the Sahara and the uh, tropical and further areas of Africa. And you see there's some argument here. That it's, it's sometimes considered to be part of this Nilo-Saharan language family, but apparently that, you know, that's, it, it's debated. A, a lot of these language families, like, there's room for debate about what exactly fits in. So if you were to combine all the Nilo-Saharan languages, they would be together much higher up on the list. Uh, I think Nubian would be uh, another one, I believe. Uh, this one up by that similar area of uh, Sudan. See, now, already, already that list... Uh, we just kind of storm through the world's major language families, and uh, we've, we're already down below a million speakers. So every other language in the world uh, that isn't part of the families we just looked at is going to be less than a million speakers. So here we're really getting into some, uh, some really niche languages. Um, I mean, the four, okay, the four languages. Here it's spoken in this little patch of uh, Western Sudan and Eastern Chad. Um, two languages. Mizumalpan. What's, what's this one about? From Honduras and Nicaragua. Okay, I had never heard of this one. Uh, this language family from this stretch of Central American coast here. Uh, an indigenous language family. Um, Arawakan language family of South America, really quite widely distributed. The Dogon, uh, a famous language family, uh, famous in anthropology for uh, some interesting practices they have and uh, I believe their architecture. Uh, here we have from, uh, from Mali. The Surmic language family, okay, another one from Sudan. So we have all those little uh, groups from uh, Central Africa. The Auroid. Okay, another Ethiopian family. Timor, well, we have here we have some islands of Indonesia. We have the Timor, uh, the Timor Island and uh, nearby islands uh, in Indonesia. Koikwadi, well, here we are. This is in the southwest corner of uh, Africa here. So this area is, yeah, one of the... Of course, you see most of, um, you see like that, uh, most of Africa, south like that, the, the dark brown in the north of Africa would be the Afroasiatic, like the Arabic and uh, related languages. And then a lot of the southern part of Africa below that would all be 
uh, the Atlantic Congo or uh, mainly the Bantu language family. But then there are these pockets in uh, southwestern Africa that have these more niche language families. And uh, finally, I'll leave this one, the Chibchan. Okay, so we, here we see around uh, Central South America, around Panama, Colombia, uh, we see another group of indigenous languages. So this has been a whirlwind tour of uh, some of the uh, some of the top language families in the world and you can see it doesn't take very long to get down to uh, some very very niche language families so as much as there is a great diversity of languages in the world if you learn something about some of the top uh, families on that list you know you really have covered most of the world you know so yeah learn a bit about some of these top families and you really get in great coverage of you know the the range that well over 90 percent uh even 99 percent of all humans speak and then once you get down we went down a couple pages here you get down into uh some interesting outliers okay well when i started today my plan was to go and like select uh, a niche language and kind of look into it but I just even looking at that list of language families uh, really, really covered a lot. So hope you've enjoyed this uh, whirlwind tour of the world's languages.